Hello and welcome to a lesson on concurrency control and locking granularity. Hopefully by the end of today's lesson, we will have a better understanding of concurrency control problems and using locking granularity to solve these problems. So what is concurrency control? Concurrency control is the simultaneous execution to ensure serializability of transactions in a multi-user database. So this means that it is used to solve consistency and integrity problems. Concurrency control has three fundamental problems. The first being lost update. Lost update is when two transactions update the same data simultaneously. Only one of the transactions update is successfully saved while the other is lost. Secondly, uncommitted data. Uncommitted data is when two transactions, namely T1 and T2, are executed concurrently. Only T2 is recorded and T1 is not. Essentially, T1 becomes null and void. It is as if T1 was never executed. Lastly, inconsistent retrieval. Inconsistent retrieval is when a transaction accesses data before and after another transaction completes its operation on the same data. The question now arises, how do we solve these problems? These problems can be solved by locking and timestamping. Today we are only going to elaborate further on one aspect of locking, known as lock granularity. Lock granularity indicates the level of access to the database by a lock manager. Note, the lock manager is software and not a person. The five different levels of access in locking granularity are database level locking, table level locking, page level locking, row level locking, and field level locking. Database level locking. Database level locking is when the entire database is restricted to allow only one transaction at a time. Table A and B form part of the payroll database where transaction T1 and T2 interact with its. T1 and T2 request to perform an operation on table A and B in the database. T1's request is granted and locks the entire database. T2 has to wait for T1 to complete its operation and unlock the database. Then and only then will T2 have access to the database. Table level locking is when each table in a database allows only one transaction to interact with it at a time. Table level locking is less restrictive than database level locking. T1 and T2 try to access table A at the same time. T1's request is granted and the table is locked. T2 has to wait until T1 has completed and unlocks the table. Other transactions can be performed on other tables in the database at the same time. Page level locking. Page level locking is when a number of rows across one or many tables are locked and the number of rows are set by the lock manager. In essence, a page is a virtual table across one or many tables. T1 requests access to page 1. Access is granted to T1. Page 1 is now locked by T1. T2 requests access to page 2. Access is granted to T2. Page 2 is now locked by T2. T2 then requests access to page 1. Access is denied and will only be granted once T1 is complete and unlocks page 1. T2 is then granted access to page 1 and will unlock both pages once both operations are complete. Row level locking. Row level locking allows concurrent transactions to perform operations on the same table as long as the rows are different. Row level locking is less restrictive than the previous levels of locking. T1 requests row 1 and T2 requests row 2. Both requests are granted and both rows are locked. Once operations are complete, both rows are unlocked. Field level locking allows concurrency control to perform operations on the same row as long as the fields are different. Field level locking is the most flexible and the least restrictive of all the levels of locking. In this lecture we have covered what is concurrency control, what is locking granularity and the five types of locking. Note that the higher level of locking, the lower the overheads are. Created using Paltoon.